Hello everyone, I am Ivy Corvus, and today we're going to be talking about how to create servitors, how to maintain servitors, answering common questions. We're going to be talking about a lot in this video, and you might be thinking to yourself, Ivy, you already have a servitor video. Yes, I do, but I hate it. I filmed it maybe over a year ago, and I hate how I filmed it. I hate the lighting, I hate everything about it. So, this is me redoing that video, and there were also a lot of questions in the comments that I wanted to address as well. So this is going to be the revised expanded edition. This is now the video that I can refer to people when there are any questions regarding servitors. We're also going to go into what a servitor even is. I personally, I want to put a disclaimer here before we get into all of that. I personally would not say that this is a beginner practice. This video is not for beginners. And the reason why I say that is because you're already going to want to know how how to manipulate your own energy. You need to have some sort of knowledge of sigils prior to creating servitors. You need to know how to create sigils, charge sigils, and activate sigils. So there's already some knowledge that you will need to have going into this. So I'm going to link two videos down below. The first video that I am going to link is my video on sigils. It shows four different ways to create sigils, including planetary squares, and it and also includes how to charge and activate your sigils as well. And then the second video that I'm going to include is called What is chaos magic and the reason why I am including that video as some sort of prerequisite for this video is because the use of servitors is very popular within the chaos magic paradigm now you don't have to be a chaos magic practitioner to work with servitors anybody who has a magical practice can work with a servitor but I do find that it's helpful to at least understand what chaos magic is so you can get a better perspective on this practice in general so definitely go check out those two videos first if you are unfamiliar with those topics, then come back here and finish the rest of this video about servitors. So let's dive into the first big question, which is, what is a servitor? A servitor is a magical entity created by the magical practitioner to carry out specific tasks for you. So it really is like a magical servant. It does not have emotions. It does not have a mind of its own. Those are tulpas, and I'm not even going to remotely talk about tulpas in this video. I actually did make a whole video on tulpas, but the practice was so controversial. I had to make that video unlisted because y'all y'all be doing too much in the comments. So I took away that video video for now. I don't know, maybe I'll put it back up in the future, but servitors are very much like servants. Again, they do not have a mind of their own. They simply carry out whatever task it is that you set for it. So an example of this would be, let's say you're trying to get a job. You're looking for job opportunities and you want to create a servitor to help point out job opportunities that you may have otherwise missed. You can also create a servitor to help to let you know when people are attracted to you, if you're wanting to use them in love workings or just to help bring loving energy towards you. You can also create servitors as sort of like guard dogs and you can have them only activate when there's a specific threat. So I have a personal servitor that guards my entire property and my house and it only activates under the right conditions. There are so many different ways that you can use a servitor but ultimately it's this magical entity that you work with on a regular basis to perform specific tasks. A lot of practitioners seem to have different perspectives on what this entity is, whether it's external, whether it's internal, and I think that's open for interpretation. I've gotten a lot of questions about this, so I will kind of share both sides and then I'll share my own personal opinion on it. Some people believe that servitors are a thought form. It is simply a piece of your own psyche. It is a thought form that you are putting organization to and bringing out from the internal environment out into the external environment. Other people say that when you create a servitor, you are, it's not necessarily a part of you. It's not necessarily a thought form. It's more like you are putting Putting a job posting out there when you're creating the servitor and then a servitor type entity comes in to fill that job role. So from that perspective, it is more like an external being that's coming in to fill that servitor role. My personal perception and how I work with servitors is that my servitors are a part of my subconscious mind. And it gets a little tricky here because it's part of my subconscious mind, but it's also a little bit beyond my subconscious mind as well. So the way I've described it in the past is I feel like my subconscious mind has a bunch of gremlins running around in there. They're all chaotic. They're all running around doing random things, sometimes not for my benefit. So what I want to do is I want to give those gremlins a job. So for me, my servitors are the little gremlins inside of my brain. And instead of wreaking havoc and doing things that I don't want them to do, they are now assigned a specific task. They want something to do. They are bored. So if they want an assignment, that is exactly what I'm going to give them. So for me, a servitor is not an external entity 
identity. It's a part of myself deep in my subconscious mind that I don't typically have access to on a conscious level when I'm going about my day. And so the servitor really is like a thought form that you are adding intention to, organizing it in such a way that you are pulling it out into the external environment to get the results that you want from your external environment. When we get to the part later on in this video where we discuss how to create a servitor, we're going to talk about the lifespan because typically it's a short-term arrangement when you're working with a servitor. You are assigning them to a specific task and then once that assignment is done, that servitor goes into retirement. Although there are some situations where it can be a long-term relationship, for example, my personal servitor that guards my property and my home, that is a long-term arrangement. But it's not something that you just set it and forget it. There is a process of feeding, which we will also talk about later in this video. You want to continuously feed your intention and give offerings to this entity on a regular basis. So if you're a person that maybe struggles with consistency, this might not be the practice for you because it does require a lot of consistency. We will also be talking about what that retirement process looks like and recycling that servitor back into the earth back into you wherever you pulled that servitor from so we're gonna talk about that a little bit further but when that servitor has completed that task and if you don't want to reassign it to anything else you do need to end the servitor that sounds a little dark and depressing it's not quite that dark and depressing but you know what I mean this is not something where you want to create a servitor and then just ghost it or something for the sake of your own psyche more than anything you absolutely need to have closure on this situation once the servitor has fulfilled its purpose so now that you hopefully have an idea of what a servitor is, let's talk about how to create a servitor. There's many, many different ways to do this. I would really like to start with the more textbook, the traditional way of making a servitor first because I find that it's a lot easier to understand. And then I will show you how I personally create servitors because I actually don't use this method anymore after creating many servitors over the course of my magical practice. I've kind of adopted a weird routine that works for me specifically, but we'll start with the textbook first. So there's a couple different things that go into creating a servitor and we are going to talk about its purpose, powers, lifespan, appearance, name and activation code, sustenance, location, the fatal flaw, and the sigil. Some people say that when you create a servitor, this is not a quick adventure. This is not something that you do over a day or two days. This is something that you really want to incubate in your mind and spend a lot of time and effort producing all the details of this servitor before you go through any sort of activation. I think it's a personal preference. I do see the validity in some people creating quick servitors for a very small task and in that case it would be appropriate to create it over a day or two but if you're wanting to have a long-term servitor in my opinion I think it really actually does it justice to spend a good amount of time hashing out all the details for this servitor so you want to get a piece of paper and a pen because you're going to be writing a lot of stuff down you're basically going to be creating this entity from nothing and you want to have all the details covered before you go through that activation you don't want to be activating a servitor and then not knowing how to shut down that servitor if things don't go the way that you want them to go. So there are some precautions here. So get a piece of paper, get a pen, and this is what you're going to write down. So starting with the purpose, you're going to want to write down what is the purpose of your servitor? What is this servitor going to do for you? You can be as detailed as you like, but it's basically, this is the moment where you are assigning your intention to this servitor. Now let's get into powers. This is pretty straightforward. What abilities or skill set do you want this servitor to have in order to finish the task that you assign it to? Some people like to make this really grand and have this servitor that has crazy powers. Some people like to keep it really logical and very simple. This is your world, so you get to decide what that looks like. But the powers really just refer to the skill set, what the servitor can actually do to accomplish what you want. So let's go back to our example of creating a servitor to help you get a job. What sort of powers would that servitor possess? Maybe it helps you find those job opportunities that you otherwise would have missed. Maybe it helps with good communication so that servitor helps you speak better during interviews. Maybe it's a more glamour-based servitor that helps you appear more desirable to employers. So this is really where you get to detail everything that you want because okay, say your intention is to get a job. That is very, very basic. How exactly do you want that servitor to help you with that? So the powers is really supplemental to the purpose. Let's talk about the appearance. You are creating a magical entity out of nothing. You're gonna wanna give it some sort of appearance. Some people like to visualize their servitors as a swirling cloud or maybe um, a hybrid animal where it's got the body of one animal and a, the head of another animal. It can be anything that you want it to be. It 
can be a creature or it can be a blade of grass. It can be a ball of light or an orb or whatever you want it to be, but give it some sort of shape because now we are at the point where you are shaping your intention and giving your mind some visuals to work with. So a lot of people do this through visualization. They will lie down into a little meditation and spend a couple minutes or 30 minutes or however long you want just building up what that servitor looks like. If you're a person that doesn't enjoy visualization, there are so many other options for you. You can paint a picture of it or draw a picture of it. I know some people that use computer graphics to create the visual of their servitor. So if you're you know, a techie person, that's always an option for you. So it does not have to be just through visualization, but you just wanna give it some sort of shape. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is give it a name. And I suggest naming this servitor something that doesn't invoke any other feelings or memories in you. So don't name it after your parents, don't name it after a pet or something that gives you some sort of visual of something else, unless technically that's what you're going for and that's a whole nother thing. But I would suggest really creating the name out of something that sounds totally foreign and abstract to you. And this name is what you're going to use in the sigil creation, which is what we will talk about shortly. Next is the activation code. So this is the activation code that you are going to use to summon your servitor. It can be a combination of words, of body positions, of actions. The signature or the activation code to summon that servitor can be anything you want it to do. For example, in the past, I had a servitor where if I signed their name in cursive, in the air with my specific wand that would activate that servitor and bring the servitor into the space that I was working in. Some people like to use an activation code in word format so it's a specific phrase that they are saying in order to activate that servitor and bring it forth. So whatever you want it to be, a word, a body position, an action of signing the name in cursive in the air holding a specific wand, whatever you want to do is up to you. The next thing that you want to consider is sustenance, food. How are you going to keep the servitor alive and how are you going to be consistent with the offering process because you do want to be giving your servitor offerings and this can look so different depending on the type of servitor so you'll have to get creative here some people like to offer a stick of incense to their servitor so they'll have a little tiny altar set up for the servitor and they'll light a, a stick of incense as an offering some people like to do acts of service so if you are assigning a servitor to do a specific task and then you do something to help that servitor achieve that task, the servitor can feed off you doing that act of service. Or maybe you can have it feed off of good results. If it brings you good results and you feel happiness in that moment because the servitor is bringing you what you desire, that servitor can feed off your energy as well and it encourages the servitor to continuously keep doing that. So for example, I have a servitor that helps with my anxiety in crowds because I really struggle to be around people in real life. And when my servitor is helping me with that and producing calming energy to me, it can feed off of that calming energy that it's providing me and it gives it an incentive to continue giving me calming energy when I'm in those anxious environments. Another offering that I have personally done is I have dollhouses for my servitors. We're going to talk about location in a second, so I will bring this up again when we talk about that, but every time my servitor completes a task for me or does something that I really want them to do, I buy them a new little piece of furniture and I put it in that dollhouse for them. So it can be physical offerings, again, acts of service, it can be whatever you want it to be. Okay, let's talk about location because you need somewhere to house your servitor. It's similar to the idea of a genie in a bottle. Your servitor is the genie and you need a bottle. You need something for it to constantly live in. This can be a physical object, so it can literally be a bottle. It can be something like this, like a little box. And then what you would end up doing is putting the servitor sigil inside of it and then any additional offerings if you want to that kind of correspond to the assignment. Or you can have the servitor live inside your mind. You can have your servitor live in your big toe or your pinky finger, wherever you want it to be. If you want that servitor to stay inside of you rather than living in an actual object, you can do that. Like I just mentioned, I have these gothic dollhouses for my servitors. They look so cool. I painted them black and I got some really uh, awesome occult witchy furniture to put in those gothic dollhouses and that is where my servitors reside and then again as my offerings anytime that they do something that I like I will buy
buy them a new piece of furniture or I will clean out their house and kind of rearrange things just to refresh that energy. Getting down to the end of the creation process and what you're needing to outline, the next thing that we need to talk about is the fatal flaw. This is what you're going to use to basically either send the servitor into retirement, to end the servitor somehow, or let's say things get out of hand and you need to banish the servitor, something's happening and you don't want it to happen that way. The fatal flaw shuts things down. And this is really important to outline before creating the servitor because again, you don't want to get yourself into a position where you need to banish a servitor, but you have no way of banishing it. So the fatal flaw usually consists of a combination of words and actions. You want it to be something really complex. That way you don't accidentally do it and then accidentally kill off your servitor when you don't mean to. So you want to make it really complex and honestly sometimes ridiculous. So you want to be maybe sitting in a specific position, holding your hand a certain way or holding a specific object in your hand while chanting a specific phrase. That is a combination of actions that's really difficult to accidentally do. So for me, I have to be in a very specific sitting position. I need to be holding the item that is connected to my servitor and I need to be chanting a specific phrase in order to send that servitor to retirement or to banish them or just end the situation. And I've gotten a lot of questions about this. Um, some people have asked, can you accidentally banish a servitor or kill them off or send them to retirement just by thinking about the fatal flaw? In my experience, I would say that this is a no. There are so many thoughts that happen in my head that never come to fruition. If all the thoughts that we thought actually came true, I'm sure a lot of us would be in trouble. So I just want to ease your mind that if you think about it in your mind, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to kill off your servitor. So let's say you have a specific phrase that's a fatal flaw. If you accidentally think that phrase, it's not like you're killing your servitor. So don't have to worry about that. One more thing I wanted to say about the fatal flaw and sending a servitor to retirement. It doesn't have to be this grotesque, depressing thing. <laughs> it doesn't have to be you killing off the servitor every time. Because I know a lot of people really struggle with that mentality where they become emotionally attached to their servitors and then they feel bad about killing a servitor off. For me, the way that I perceive it is because this is a thought form, it's part of my own psyche. When I send that servitor to retirement, I am basically just absorbing it back into my body. Although it's technically already in my body, but I am letting that gremlin release that job description and take a break, go to retirement and relax for the rest of its days. So if that concerns you for any reason, for ethical reasons, you can think about it like it's just taking a nice relaxing break for the rest of its life. But using the fatal flaw is important, not only for the closure on your own psyche, but let's say for example, you lose the object that the servitor is housed in. Or again, if something goes the way that you don't want it to go and you need to immediately banish that servitor, it's so important to create that fatal flaw so that you can use it to get closure for your own mind. Now that you have fully outlined the details of your servitor, it's time to get into the activation phase. So don't worry, just because you've written down all the details of your servitor, your servitor is not activated yet. This is just you outlining the process of what you want it to be like working with this servitor. So what you want to do at this point is create a sigil for your servitor. And again, not really going to go over sigils in this video. Definitely check out my video on sigils. But typically how I do this is I take the name of my servitor and then use the letters from the name to create the sigil. So you can use this as the actual letters or you can convert letters to numbers and then use a planetary square if you want that servitor to be from a specific planet or have certain planetary energies associated with it. So many different ways that you can make sigils, but you basically just wanted to be centered around the servitor in general. Some people don't even use the name of the servitor. Some people just use the intention phrase or the intention word that you have tied to the sigil. So there's really no right or wrong way here. Make a sigil however you want to make a sigil. And then what you're going to do in order to activate the servitor, you are going to activate the sigil which is going to activate the servitor. So I've had a lot of questions about this as well where people were asking, okay, how do I actually bring it live? I've written down everything. I have created the sigil. Now what? Is my servitor alive? Like what's going on at this point? So as discussed in my sigil video, there are many, many ways that you can activate a sigil, but you essentially want to get into some sort of altered state of consciousness while staring at the sigil. So this can be through meditation and trance. This can be through a state of ecstasy. 
Again, if you're not familiar with how to activate a sigil, that is some prior knowledge that you will need to have, but you would basically just activate it the same exact way that you would activate any other sigil. And then once that sigil is activated, so is your servitor. Now, nothing's magically going to poof and happen in front of you in this moment. At least I've never personally experienced that. It's almost like when you sit down to do spell work, it's not like you have this cloud of smoke that goes up in front of you after you finish the spell or something. You do have to be patient and you have to wait for those results. Keep feeding your servitor and giving it offerings. Now that you have created your servitor, if you choose to do it in this more textbook style way, the traditional way of creating a servitor, now we're moving into the maintenance phase. So this is where you need to be patient. You need to not obsess over results, which is extremely difficult to do. I know, but it's the same rules that apply to spell work of all kinds. You don't want to be constantly obsessing over it. You kind of just want to put it in the back of your mind. Be patient. Trust that the universe will bring you what you want. This is a lot of just spell work 101 advice here, so I'm not really going to go too deep into that but you do want to continue feeding it and when you do want to call that servitor forth say there is a specific moment in time where you want to work with that servitor for whatever reason maybe you want to kind of like tinker with it a little bit to adjust its job description or maybe you want to call it forth in a specific ritual because that ritual aligns with the assignment of your servitor whatever that is you would just use the name and activation code you would use your activation code to call that servitor forth and do whatever you need to do there so now that we We've established kind of a baseline textbook way of how to create servitors and how to work with them. I kind of wanted to talk about my process because my process has changed over the years working with servitors. I work with servitors a lot in the astral realm and I find that it's so much faster and more efficient for me personally, although this does require a heavy amount of visualization. So if that's not your thing, feel free to skip this part. And I also did a, so if you're interested in astral work and you have no idea what that is or how to even get started, I did do a collaboration with the Norse Witch, so I will link a third video down below that talks about the ins and outs of astral work. We gave tons of advice to beginners in that video, and I talked about my own astral journeys and kind of how I personally work through that. So what I do now when I want to work with a servitor, whether I am creating it, maintaining it, sending it to retirement, it doesn't matter. It happens all in the same place. I lay down and go into a meditation, allow myself to kind of enter a trance-like state. I go to my inner temple. Again, Check out that, that other video. We talk about inner temples and mind palaces and all that kind of stuff. But there's a door in my mind that I open that leads to a world called Wonderland. And this is for me personally throughout my own journeys. So I have somewhat discovered slash created a place called Wonderland where I can work with magical entities. I can meet deities there and other spirits. But what I do is that when I'm in that trance state, I open the door and walk into Wonderland and I have a servitor workshop. So I talked about the servitor workshop just briefly in that astral video, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more here. So this is where I do all my work when it comes to servitors. So when I need to create them or reassign them for a specific task, or if I just want to spend some quality time with them to really build that relationship up a little bit more, this all happens in the workshop. And so when I go in, I have the sigil for the servitor posted almost on a bulletin board in the workshop. Again, this is all happening in my mind through visualization, but I have a bulletin board with the sigil posted as well as the servitor's name and then I will go in and work with them. I will change things around and reassign them to different tasks. I will spend some time working on their appearance and really giving them some sort of shape or form to work with. So I find that having a place in my mind a servitor workshop that I can go into and kind of make adjustments as need be is really helpful, especially when it comes to, let's say you have a servitor. This kind of goes into a question that I'm going to address towards the end of this video, but let's say you have a servitor that has completed a task for you. Now what? Can you reassign the same servitor or do you just send it to retirement? And I think that's a total personal opinion. There are some servitors that I've had in the past that did not really bring me that great of results. They technically fulfilled their role, but it wasn't really anything outstanding. It wasn't exactly what I'm hoping for. Maybe it was a little slow in bringing me those results. I may not want to work with that servitor again, but if I have a servitor that's bringing me amazing results really quickly and it just seems like everything's clicking, I want to keep working with that servitor. So what I would do once they finish a task is I go into that servitor workshop and this is kind of where I rewire that servitor and change it to a new task. So I'm still working with the same servitor, but I now have a new assignment 
alignment for it. So that's kind of an easy way to reassign servitors if need be. So I just wanted to throw that out there because there are so many different ways to create a servitor and I don't want people to feel limited by anything. This is your own mind. This is your own world. You can technically create a servitor however you want to. Some people even like to bring in external entities that they want to fill that servitor role for them. So it really just depends. I don't personally think there's any right or wrong way. I just think there are more effective ways and less effective ways and you need to figure that out for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about some common questions or just a lot of the questions that I got on my previous servitor video that I really wanted to clear up. I think one of the biggest questions was can you reassign a servitor? And as I just detailed in the previous section in case you ended up skipping that part, yes you can absolutely reassign a servitor. It is completely up to you whether you want to continue working with a servitor if it's bringing you great results or if it's something that you it did not bring you great results, you really don't want to continue working with it, you want to send it into retirement again up to you you can do whatever you want another kind of blanket question that I think I was getting quite a bit is a lot of what about this situation or what about that situation is it appropriate to create a servitor for, for this or what would you do etc and my answer to that is try it try it be experimental be your own scientist again there are no wrong answers here obviously I'm giving you a guide of how to hopefully be successful but you're really gonna have to play around with all of these techniques and see what ends up working for you see what gives you results. This is why it's so important to write things down. It's important to write down all the details about your servitor, how you're going to be consistent with that servitor with your offerings, and then also writing down all the results as they come in, everything that your servitor is bringing to you, just to kind of assess, is this relationship working? Is it not? Has it been way too long and I've seen no results? Okay, so let's say you didn't have results. Let's look at that further. Maybe you need to up your feeding schedule. Maybe you need to change the types of things that you're offering this servitor. Maybe this servitor isn't going to work at all for various different reasons. Maybe your intention phrase was too broad or generalized, or maybe it was way too specific to the point where it was nearly impossible for that servitor to even fulfill that task in the first place. Whatever it is, you need to be writing down your process so that you can answer your own questions and be your own scientist, because it is so going to vary from person to person, from servitor to servitor. And I really want to encourage people to play around, make mistakes, figure it out. The only way that you are going to get better working with servitors is by making mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes. Again, working with servitors is very low risk because it's not even something that has a mind of its own. It's not something that has emotions. You're not working with some sort of lesser being that you're making a pact with or something. This is a very low risk practice, in my experience at least. But you need to be experimental and try things out for yourself. So I think that's what I wanted to say in response to all the comments that I was getting on that video is that you don't really have to worry too much about the whataboutisms. You just need to do it and try it for yourself. Another question I was seeing pretty regularly is where do I house my servitor? Can I put them in this box? Can I put them in this, you know, whatever? Can I put them? It doesn't matter. It is totally up to you. You have probably seen a common theme by now with all of my answers. <laughs> you can put them wherever you want to put them. I think people I think in the culture that we have created, people are so nervous to do the wrong thing. They feel like they have to follow rules exactly as they are stated. And this practice is not about following rules. This practice is about experimentation and seeing what works for you. So that was really the message that I wanted to drive home when answering these questions is that don't be afraid to experiment it's gonna be okay. <laughs> so anyways, I hope that answers all the questions. If you do have any additional questions, I'm always open to hearing them. So please feel free to comment in the comment box below. I try my best to respond to all questions as I can, although sometimes I do get a little overwhelmed because I'm an introvert, you know, and I have to take my own mental health in consideration. So I will try to answer questions as best as I can, but also maybe some other people can answer questions in the comments as well. So thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in another video soon. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.